Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to start by recognising the substantial contribution made by my predecessor, Kenny McCaskill. He served his constituents ably and moved the Scottish justice agenda forward considerably during his time as Cabinet Secretary. I am privileged to represent the constituency just outside this building, Edinburgh Eastern. It encompasses people from a wide variety of backgrounds. It has vibrant communities, but despite this, it also faces many challenges. During the last few months, I've spoken with many of my constituents, and I promised them that I would carry their concerns with me into this chamber. And for as long as I represent Edinburgh Eastern, I will fulfill that promise. During my time with a progressive think tank, I had many meetings here in Parliament to discuss policy ideas for Scotland. And I look forward to being able to engage just as constructively with the third sector now I'm on the other side. I intend to listen to and act on ideas that have the potential to move Scotland forward. And I'd like to reflect on the changing nature of Scotland using the experience of two women from my own family, my mother and my grandmother. My grandmother was abandoned by her father. She was married in a borrowed dress. She took on cleaning jobs in the evening as it was the only work that fitted around the demands of a young family. In later life though, both her and my mother went on to run successful small businesses. My mother, who despite passing her 11 plus and attending a senior secondary, left school at just 15 with no qualifications. She felt that further education was not relevant for her, not relevant for a working class girl from a city centre tenement with no indoor toilet. Now, thanks to the commitment to widening access, this isn't the case. Young people from backgrounds like my mother are more likely to feel that university is relevant to them. And free tuition makes that step towards fulfilling their dreams easier. While I was receiving my university conditional offers through the post a while ago now, my mother, who was then just newly widowed, was struggling with soaring interest rates to keep a roof over our head. I actually went to university in England and it was at that time free. I looked it up last night just to check and my old university now charges the full £9,000 a year. That is a staggering £27,000 for a three-year course, and that is just for tuition. I believe that with my family circumstances at the time, the thought of getting into so much debt would have scared me off, and I wouldn't have gone, and I would have missed out on that opportunity. So I reserve a particular disdain for those who have benefited from a free university education themselves, only to turn around and seek to deny it to those coming after them. And that's why I commend this government's continuing commitment to free tuition. And right there, that is the difference the SNP has made. In England, a young person will rack up huge debts to study at university, and in Scotland, they won't. According to the OECD's recent survey on education, England now has the highest tuition fees in the industrialised world. On the other side of this chamber, parties disparage this gain made by this government. Presiding officer, so keen are they to say that Scotland must not become the highest tax part of the UK. Yet what are tuition fees but a tax on education? A tax on aspiration? and attacks on social mobility. It's the creeping commoditization of everything. I subscribe to the idea that education is not a commodity to be bought or sold like a tin of beans or a loaf of bread, but rather an expression of society's belief in learning for its own sake, a wider benefit to all of society. After all, Today's children may end up working in jobs or in sectors that don't actually exist yet. We can only imagine what the world of work will look like 20 years from now. Many of today's startups are coming straight out of our universities. So doesn't it make sense to invest in them? Doesn't it make sense to invest in the future of Scotland, to invest in young people from backgrounds like that of my mother's? 
What is happening in England is a travesty, and I am proud that it is different here in Scotland. A Scotland that prioritises education, high skills and innovation now will be well prepared to succeed into that future. Educational opportunity and social mobility must be protected. Universal benefits are a principle worth fighting for, for they define the future of Scotland, the Scotland we and our children will live in. I want to make sure that any child, a child maybe from my constituency, with a similar background to my mother, will have the full opportunity to achieve their dreams. That's why I'm here. I look forward to the next five years. I look forward to making the case for progressive policies. And I look forward to debating them in this chamber. I welcome the government's many steps to move Scotland forward, and I believe that during this parliament, we will do so.